thank you so much for joining me. I am so happy to see you guys. You already know, we got the cacao going today and we're gonna have a Q&A girl chat from some questions that you guys asked on Instagram. So make sure you guys follow me there and TikTok. I am posting a lot more because I finally came to a healthy place with social media and content creation and I see it from a whole different perspective because I honestly used to hate it for like the past several years, but now I've come to a new place where I am really enjoying what I do and putting myself out there so much more and using the power of self-expression and sharing your voice. And I encourage you guys to do the same because you have a specific tone and frequency that only your sound from your mouth, your soul, your spirit can make that this world needs for healing. What is my favorite date night? I love to go on date night. Honestly, my favorite thing to do with my hubby is uh, to go to comedy clubs. I love a comedy club. I love laughing at really crude jokes and just, I love dirty jokes. Um, I love, you know, maybe drinking a little bit of champagne or cocktail or something like that at a comedy club. I really enjoy that. It's so fun for me and I never want the night to end. And I also love going to different kind of restaurants all over Los Angeles and trying out foods, you know, whether it be a place that is, usually we do more high-end restaurants because I just love to try anything and we don't do date night that often. So if we're gonna do date night, we're gonna go all in. But Jesse and I go to obviously like little holes on the wall like all the time as we're working. So for us, splurging on a delicious meal created by this impeccable chef where you're able to like just taste everything that you've never tasted before and try all the different kind of signature cocktails. That is so fun. And I also love dressing up. So I always look forward to that. Um, do you miss your old YouTube channel? I do not miss my old YouTube channel. I, I did when I first kind of left that channel and I wanted to go back to it at the very beginning um, because this one was kind of challenging at the very beginning. But then I kind of just fought the urge to go back but I'm not saying that I will never go back just because I, I gave up that YouTube channel for whenever I decide to go back. I don't miss it, but I would definitely use it for the future if, um, if let's say I wanna get more, more traction, more views on specific projects that I'm working on. That channel is always there, has a lot of subscribers um, and people are able to kind of find the stuff that I upload there a lot more quicker. Um, however, I love this YouTube channel so much because this community is very specific. Um, I'm telling you, like when I go on TikTok, a lot of people discover me that used to watch me when I was very, like in my early 20s that were, they were watching me since, you know, like 15 years ago. And they always say, what happened to Dulce Candy? Like, oh my God, I used to watch her all the time. And so a lot of people that used to watch me in the old YouTube channel are not subscribers of this channel. This is a very new community and this is very exciting for me because this is so in alignment with where I am in my life and the kind of content that we're creating because whatever you are, you attract. So I attract reflections of who I am, a version of who I am and that's my beautiful sweet soul community. And it's also been really exciting just to see the growth that has been happening, especially the end of July and this month that I've been uploading a lot more content all across my platforms. And just to see the analytics behind the scenes and the growth and the engagement, it's so exciting for me because when I started this whole new thing, even though people didn't say it directly, there was a lot of like, why would you do that? Like almost like, I don't believe in you. I don't think you can do this. Growing a new, a new YouTube channel is hard. And when I kind of picked up on that energy, it just made me even more sure that I want to start something brand new because I do want to reach certain milestones and show people that it's never too late to start a YouTube channel. It's going to take a lot of hard work, of course, a lot of hard work. I've been learning so much about vlogging and about content creation. It's something that I'm passionate about learning. So I have this fire within me and I was just so comfortable in my old YouTube channel. I kind of knew how to do it with my eyes closed. I knew the formula, I knew the kind of videos. And now I'm definitely stepping 
outside of my comfort zone and I'm learning like a student. And I feel like whenever you adapt the mentality of a student and you're always learning, you are going to be successful. There's no way around it, you are. So it's really exciting for me. Even the vlog, like the last vlog that I uploaded, it's like, girl, Come on, those vlogs do not do well anymore. So now I'm adapting a new strategy and you're gonna see that strategy in one of my next vlogs. But yeah, I learned that like vlogging, for example, it's not, people don't wanna see just kind of like day to day, like I'm doing this and then I'm doing this and then I'm doing this. You really have to put a whole story behind it and have a theme for that specific vlog because vlogging is not what it used to be. And I was vlogging back then the vlogs that you guys have seen, I was vlogging with the same mentality that I had when I used to vlog on my vlogging channel like eight years ago. So it's definitely been a lot of learning and it's really exciting. Are your parents and siblings supportive of your new path of spiritual awakening? No one is not supportive. Um, supportive um yeah my parents and my siblings are always supportive of everything that i do i think more so my mom and my sister wendy we really love to go deep into conversations i honestly do not like any kind of superficial conversation um of course you know you have small talk with a stranger or whatnot i had a nurse who um said a comment on Instagram when I said that I didn't like any small talk. She's like, well, what do you want me to do? Like not have small talk with my patients? That's not what I'm saying at all. There's always a place and a time for everything. But for my relationships, and I only have a few relationships in my life because I have been going through a season of solitude, my relationships all are meaningful and all are nourishing. And I don't, that's why I don't have a billion relationships or even 10. Um, so I don't like, um, time is so precious and so limited and you only have a certain amount of energy each and every single day. And so for me, it's not, it's not the best use of my energy to talk or to hang out with someone or see someone who wants to talk about superficial things. You know, like that to me, honestly, does not, does not move me and I have every right to feel that way. So many people feel that way also, but some, maybe they don't, you know, but to each their own, of course, um, but for me, my mom and my Wendy, I know that I can go deep with them if I need to. Maybe not all the time because not everybody suffer it all the time, but for me, it's just like, it's a waste of time if we're talking about things just to talk, like let's just save our energy and not say anything and just sit there and enjoy each other's company, which is what I do with my mom and sister also in my hobby. But um, yeah, it's more about having meaningful relationships. Um, and that's really important for me. How do you create boundaries with family, like parents or siblings, when you're working on healing, especially in a Latino community, in a Latino family? Now, the thing that I have found, and I'm gonna just be completely honest, this is my truth, is that I've done a lot of inner healing, a lot of inner child healing. I, the other day, for example, I finally came across the reason why I never loved myself, I had no self-confidence, I felt stupid, I felt ugly, I felt shamed, um, and all of these different things that I felt growing up that I was just like, why am I this way? Like, I'm eight years old thinking about ending my life, like why? And I grew up seeking attention from men, I developed a shopping addiction, I needed constant reassurance from people around me that I was doing a good job on something, like constant acknowledgement of, of stuff. So I grew up with a lot of trauma and I had no idea where it all stemmed from. And I went to an herbalist like five years ago and he took a photo of my eyeballs and he told me that I had to forgive a man and I had no idea who this man was. I was like, a man, who do I need to forgive? And finally the other day through some inner work that I was doing and working on breaking generational curses and breaking the chain of trauma so I don't pass that along to my child. Um, I wanna share this because I feel like a lot of Latinas are going to relate to this, but when you uncover the reason why you have some trauma in your life and maybe your parents are kind of like the root of those things from your childhood, um, I found in my experience that it's been challenging for me to even talk to my parents about it because I don't want to burden them with like, hey, 
you know, because of your actions, I had this type of childhood and I really had to work on myself through all of these things and I had all of these, you know, setbacks in my life and the way that I saw myself and the attention that I seeked and all of these things because I haven't really been fully seen or heard uh, from my point of view. Um, and it's also kind of like, it already happened. Why are you bringing this up? Can you just move on? So for me it has been about learning to forgive without having a conversation with the parent or the person that contributed to that trauma growing up as a child, as a little girl. And that has been my journey so far. Yeah, it's painful and it hurts and there's a lot of crying involved, of course, a lot of emotional release, which is why I feel like in that aspect right there, a, a therapist is such a great person to talk through all of these emotions and feelings that you have because sometimes the truth is that our parents are not ready to listen to it or even own up to it or even acknowledge it or give you the space to really listen. And it's like, well, how much can you do at that point? You know, I have to learn to forgive without having that conversation with that person, without that person asking for an apology or acknowledging that they played a role in our trauma. Cheese. Cheese. Asida. Hi. Asida. Here un beso. Bye. All right, guys, have a blessed and beautiful day. I can't wait to talk to you guys in the comment section, and I can't wait to see you on our next video. Bye.